It gives me great pleasure today to welcome back Catherine Lafont, who I am really looking forward to hearing about today because I bought and read your Seasons with Gratitude cookbook and I love it. And the particular part I like about it is in is the fact that you say that preparing and eating food is how we heal, comfort and connect with others. And it suggests by including gratitude, we add even more nourishment to the food. So it gives me great pleasure today as spring is bursting all around us to welcome you back because I'm looking forward to telling, hearing what you can tell us to cook this springtime. Thank you, Janet. I'm so delighted to hear that you've got seasoned with gratitude because it's it's a, quite a, a large book, but I think of it as three in one because it can be used almost as a coffee table book where you just open it and you read a blessing of gratitude for, for the day. Or you might breeze through the recipes at the end in the about sections that give uh, little tidbits of information that is in regards to uh, all manner of things, but often ingredients and what those ingredients might bring from a health standpoint. So uh, along with the recipes, 250 recipes, it, it has these other benefits. And today I'm going to focus on spring energy and what is uh, happening within us. Because I would imagine that we've got we've got people online who are very interested in cooking, but that you might not know what our bodies are needing come spring. So I'm going to begin with a brief discussion about that. So in Chinese medicine, this spring energy is all about the liver and gallbladder and what those organs are needing in our lives. And so we often come to the thought that um, cleansing foods will be most helpful to kind of get us out of the heaviness of winter. And when we think of um, the, the need of our livers who are so, so important, they're the largest uh, organ in the body. They're right under our right rib cage. The, the organ is, it's, it, it's thought of as the master laboratory of our bodies. And it filters the blood of toxins. It loves the sour flavor. And when we are imbalanced in our liver energy, so that means that we're struggling in some way. It's not able to do its job at its best, highest and best level. Uh, we might have uh, issues with fungus, like toenail fungus. We might have issues with our eyes. We might have um, aching joints or limbs, uh, tendons and muscles, ligament type things. Or we might be extremely uh, uh, fond of the color green or... Um, or actually more uh, avoidance of the color green. So there's little, little hints that we get uh, from our bodies on whether we need to bring particular foods in, in the spring or not. And when I think about spring foods, and if we were going to work with that idea, how can I support the liver? We might be moving towards foods that would, um, help us cleanse what's going on. So we might lean towards some of the more sour foods, for instance, like adding dandelion greens. And that can be as simple as, uh, as making salads, such as um, spinach, arugula, and then adding a few dandelion greens from your yard. Um, chopping it all up and having it with a poached egg in the morning as part of your breakfast. What I'm suggesting is that when we are working with the spring energy from a standpoint of our bodies, 
it is often helpful to eat lighter foods, for instance, like adding more salad greens, um, adding deep greens that would help to cleanse the liver. Um, they are also working on your behalf to assimilate the nutrients that you're taking in in a, in a more wholesome way. And they are often diuretics, natural diuretics. Am I coming in clear? Can you see? You are. So, so Catherine, when you pick your dandelions, you must pick them out your garden so you know that there's no pesticides on them. Exactly. Yes. And these are very small leaves then. Normally I look for the smaller leaves, but this time of year we don't uh, have the flowers coming up yet. And so the greens are less bitter. Yeah. So, um, so for instance, I would go out and grab it where it's the freshest it can be. I'm eating it within 10 minutes of, of giving it a good wash and, and drying it. Um, other ideas for you uh, in how to get those greens of making a frittata where I sauteed um, chopped kale with butter and added a, a heaping handful of mushrooms, sliced mushrooms, and then having that. So I'm again looking for ways that I can get the green vegetables in at every meal if possible. Um, I'm going to back up a minute. One of the things that uh, if you go back to our ancestors' time, they would be picking these greens out of the fields early in the spring. They're like so welcome. It's like the only fresh foods they've had in a while. And the other thing that they would be coming upon would be eggs, bird eggs, or from it, once we came into an agricultural period to actually use their own chicken eggs or ducks or quail. And so I, I tried to focus on some egg, egg and green dishes as one of the ways we begin this spring energy and can use those well. And um, a few other things that you can find out in your, in your gardens coming up, um, maybe chickweed, it could be another month before we get the, the crop of chickweed. I always leave a little room for a patch of chickweed. Um, I can't show you pictures of those right now, but uh, you can look them up. If you're not familiar, lamb's quarters is another one. Or sorrel. Sorrel rides pretty close to the ground and it looks like little spaceship shaped leaves. And again, that can be um, a little bit lemony in flavor. So it's quite a joy to add to salads and things. Um, one of the things I did that I had included a recipe for, and I'm not sure what you can see here, is I made a quiche. Oh, yes. Yeah. All right. This uh, got chilled in the fridge so I can do this. <laughs> I don't want to be dumping a, a quiche on my uh, computer. And so with that, I added... Um, I added broccoli and shiitake mushrooms and red onions, um, a number of spices, including dry mustard and uh, savory. Um, sometimes I add thyme and salt and pepper, um, but I normally don't take the time to make a quiche. And in the spring, I think more about that, of what would our ancestors be eating? Well, likely eggs and likely greens. And so I'm looking for how can I add more of that to our diet? Um, so Catherine, did you pre-cook the broccoli and the red onions before you made the quiche? Yes, I did. Yes, I sauteed them along with the mushrooms in uh, butter. Yeah. Yeah. And um, let's see. 
one of the things that I often have at this time of year, and I might have it for an appetizer, I might have it for a side course to a dinner, is uh, spring roasted asparagus. And asparagus has, of course, lots of fiber, but also vitamin A and C and K. And it's been known to help in lowering blood pressure. Um, it can help clean out toxins, um, even add to weight loss, just help to, to move our interiors so that they're ready for the coming year. And um, in my recipe of spring roasted asparagus, it's page 175 and 76 in the book. I'll turn to that right now. Um, just in case I so I'll, um, I'll give it a quick rinse and then dry it completely and pour a bit of olive oil on a baking sheet, add some sea salt and likely garlic, pressed garlic. Um, sometimes I use black sesame seeds or some of the nigella seeds, which are more like a onion or cumin type seed. Um, and then I'll just toss it all together and then roast at 400 degrees for 10 to 15 minutes. I want them to be a little bit crisp, especially if I'm going to use them as an appetizer. But of course you could, you could eliminate the olive oil, toss them with a little sesame oil, um, just to change it up, a little rice wine vinegar maybe when you get done. Um, but they are so tasty, you know, and this is the time of year when they are at their best. Unless we have, uh, unless we have gone to the effort of canning and maybe having um, canned asparagus from this time of year. Otherwise, they've got a lot of mileage on them. They're coming from such a long distance away that I have to ask myself whether it's worth it to use all those fossil fuels to bring me some asparagus. I want to use what is fresh in the season and what's starting to come up, at least in our country. So um, what are some of the other things that we can easily get this time of year, like leeks? So I might do um, some, uh, kind of a scramble with sauteed leeks and maybe I use some feta cheese in that and um, what else would be good? Kalamata olives, you know, to make it a little bit more Mediterranean in its flavors. I might, um, I might go to uh, juices or um, smoothies this time of year where I, won't remember them at other periods in the year. So I'll look in the freezer and think, okay, what are the berries that I picked right near the end last year in their um, season? So I use some uh, evergreen huckleberries that I had picked. I've got salau berries at times. I had noticed that we had blueberries in, in a particularly long season last year. Yeah. So I'll freeze up a little bit of blueberry and then I will make a smoothie for me in the morning with a large handful of rich ripe berries that um, frozen then I don't need to add any ice and it's still chilled. And then I might take uh, three leaves of kale and take the the vein out the tougher parts and then make sure that's washed and chopped and add that to my blender uh, maybe a half a banana or a whole small banana and a little almond milk and so I, what I find is most important for us is variety changing up our diet, looking at what the season is asking. And also, I want to uh, bring out anything that, that's been in the freezer that would be highly nutritious 
such as those deep red berries, because they are heart healthy and they're adding a lot of antioxidants to my life. Um, so I, I want to make sure I use those and not just in the sweet things like pies. Um, let's see, what else do I think of this time of year? I want to look at, um, at what might be left in my greenhouse or in the ground that came through the year. And I had a, a really sweet picture of some crazy kale that was in my garden that is now about three feet tall. It looks like I have an art uh, gallery in this one section because I have all these long stems coming up with little funny little hats of kale coming out of them. And um, so I'm looking for ways to use that. I might uh, chop it up and, and have a kale salad and add a number of things that uh, could be healthy. Um, pumpkin seeds, um, sesame seeds, cran raisins, cranberries, um, leftover blueberries from last year. Um, what else do I put in there? I just try to find a variety of things so that the salad is robust and then I can have a protein with it and I've pretty much got lots of vegetables and I might add grated carrot to that uh, just to, to make sure that I'm adding a variety. At, so throughout the day, I've added more vegetables than maybe at other times in the year. Another, another item not to be forgotten is when you look in your, in your gardens, if you happen to have one, or you might even notice that the carrot option at the grocery store, that they're getting bigger and they look more healthy, that yeah. this is the time of year when they're starting to perk up. So what I've got is I pulled three carrots from my little garden shed I had that I had forgotten about them. And then I also have two carrots. They're all organic. This was um, from the grocery store, but I found it. Of course, it's one of the ones that got left in the bottom of the drawer in the, in the refrigerator. And then these are the fresh ones that just got pulled out of the garden this morning. And there's going to be a marked difference in flavor. So if you can pick up, even at the grocery store, your carrots with the fresh stems on them, it's, it's almost at times like a different vegetable, especially to those packaged ones that have been run through a form thing so that they look small and round. Uh, I kind of consider those a, a non-carrot item <laughs> because a lot of the nutrition is gone. And when you buy them fresh with the, with the greens, you could also use a few of those greens if you were making a pesto. You could, I wouldn't do it with just that green, but you can add those and add another dynamic nature of flavor. Um, mm -hmm. But one of the sweet things I'll use with carrots is I will uh, slice them and roast them and add a little uh, dribble of, um, I'll roast them tossed in olive oil, but at the end, add a little drizzle of, of balsamic vinegar, and that's always lovely. And um, I find that dish a very simple one. I'll do extra, in fact, so that I can have it as salads for a couple of days or a little side dish. Um, so I, I always say, don't forget the simples like carrots. Another thing that I've been adding more and more in my diet right now is I'll try to use celery at lunchtime. Um, I might uh, have it with hummus or a dip of some sort of bean dip that I've made. Yeah. And um, it gives you that fiber that's needed at this, especially this time of year. Um, and, it, and it's a good one to ally with. The other thing I wanted to bring to mind that I don't use very often, but it's definitely one of the first vegetables that comes up this time of year and it's very much full of life. 
Can oh, you wow. see these radishes? Yeah. Um, when I was a little girl, we had a priest that often invited us to his house to eat. And he was from Lithuania. He had escaped during the war. Uh, my father would help him um, with his English. And so he would occasionally feed us and have us for dinner. And one of the things that I remember the most, maybe the only thing I remember, is that there was always radishes served with fresh pats of butter and a little bit of salt. And apparently this is a common food in Lithuania. I would love to hear, other than just in salads, if anyone is working or has experience with radishes in some innovative ways. Anybody here have any experience? You get one that looks like a watermelon. Mm -hmm. I bought the seeds this year to try and grow that, but they say not to plant that because it won't until September. It won't it won't finish growing until September, but you you plant it really late to to make that happen. Oh, interesting. Karen, did you have? Yes, um, uh, I, we like to make spring rolls and we put tofu and the and the rice noodles and and uh, and the carrots, shredded carrots. But we decided, and of course with the Thai basil and whatnot, but we um, decided to try shredded radishes with it. And it is delicious. Ah, well, we really miss out on not remembering the radish, I think, because it has a it has some wonderful flavors. And as Janet mentioned, there's a, a number of different types now. We have the longer ones. We have both red and white in the same radish. Um, some of them are, are much more spicy than another, but I agree with you, Karen, chopping them up and adding them to something like a spring roll really adds to the crunch. It, it might be a replacement even for sprouts in those to, to add that crunchiness. Christina? Yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say, believe it or not, I just like them sliced up on the side of maybe my scrambled eggs. And I didn't think that eggs and radishes would really go together all that well. But in the morning for breakfast, radishes with your scrambled eggs, I like it. it tastes really good. One other piece I was going to mention was having fun, where one of the ways I do that is um, I'll take a big handful of spinach and blend it with my scrambled egg, with my... Um, raw egg and then make a uh, Easter egg bake. I call it an Easter egg bake, but it would equally do well to surprise uh, grandchildren or wh whoever is around at um, St. Patrick's Day. But the Easter uh, egg bake would have whatever vegetables that sound good to you. And then you've already blended your spinach with the egg. And so that's poured over the sauteed vegetables. And if you would like a cheese, uh, like a grated gruyere or something on top, put it in your oven and bake it. it it's a great one for serving uh, if you have a little group or, or a, a family of uh, five or more, you know, where you can um, quickly move on to something else and have that baking while you're doing another task. So Catherine, please come up. I ask a question. I, I quiche I can bake, but frittatas because they're much deeper. How do you cook them so that they cook evenly through? I've had challenges with that. I think it would depend on uh, how much egg you're trying to work with. I normally saute the vegetables first. If it's just for the for my husband and I. Um, I, I want to make sure I've sauteed them in a way that they're still a little bit crispy, but that I haven't left a lot of water in my pan. Yeah. And then I can whip the eggs. And normally I'm only using four, maybe five if they're small eggs. Um, and I will uh, put a top. Are you using a cover? Yeah. And I'll add the cheese right at the end. I want to see how much the egg is getting done first. Yeah. Um, 
but with this Easter egg bake, it is like a frittata. Only I can use a, a dozen eggs and have a big uh, like cake pan size. And um, let me just check that page number 83. Um, and I bake it for 20 to 25 minutes or until it's cooked through. So your, your oven's going to be a little bit different. But um, with that one, one of the fun things I'll do at times is add a tortilla, a couple of tortillas on the bottom. So it gives it a little bit of a fake crust to it. Oh. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I like the ideas of the tortillas. I really love that idea. Yeah, yeah. it's just kind of fun. Yes. And uh, maybe, maybe it's patience, um, Janet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we all have to learn to patience. So do you put the tortilla on the top or on the bottom? On the bottom. On the bottom, like a pastry. Of my, of my glass baking pan. And then yeah. I'll spread the vegetables uh, over the top that I've already sauteed. And then pour the egg mixture over. Yeah, and then add the um, cheese on top. I, I had one question. Uh, remember, about a decade ago, and Bastier had that recipe for a massage kale salad with uh, apples and I can't remember. Then there's nuts in there, all that stuff. What's the is uh, massaging kale preferable to um, stir frying it or or are you cooking it at all? So uh, when we're working with some of these big uh, greens that have oxalic acid in them, in order to make it safer to consume those, we normally think about cooking. But marinating is another way of cooking. So when they talk about massaging the kale, we're talking about I think massaging it until it's soggy. Yeah. I, I, another way to do that is to just put your dressing on a, a couple hours ahead of time and letting it marinate. Um, this, it's a similar idea to the massaging. Only uh, I think very few people think of massaging their kale or spending time <laughs> doing it. <laughs> um, but putting on your salad dressing ahead and then some of the ingredients that you might throw in there, uh, save those for just before you're going to eat. And then you add that to the kale. Okay. Um, interesting. Interesting. I don't know. I, that's, it's got currants and I think pine nuts and a balsamic dressing and apple chunks and massage kale. You start off with the massage kale and let it sit for a little while, but not long. And uh, actually when, when you work with kale, I have a kale salad in here somewhere. I'm kind of looking for it right now. Um, that is similar. I call it the kitchen kale salad. And there's also a kale, apple, and blue cheese salad with um, uh, diced celery, um, thinly sliced red onion, and grated zucchini, and an apple. And the main thing I do is, is try to use a tart dressing that can really get in there and marinate the kale. And I encourage people to put it on uh, like an hour ahead and then add your other ingredients as you get close to the meal hour. Um, and the kitchen kale salad is again uh, taking anything that would be. It's, so if you're going to add a lot of ingredients, get the kale chopped and ready in advance, and get your dressing on it. Or you could spend time massaging it, but I think it's just the a similar similar condition to let it marinate. The one thing I found about kale salads is that they last well into a second day, where very few other greens can do that. 
How are we doing? We're doing just fine. And okay. yes, I'm, I'm looking forward to this weekend because I think the farmers, the Bainbridge Farmers Market opens this weekend. Okay. And so I'm hoping that some of their um, stall holders will have um, on some of the greens. We were we were at a dinner a little dinner recently with a our church supper club and somebody brought a massaged kale salad and it was she then she sent the recipe but she massaged it with salt and then completely rinsed it after and I think she let it sit a little bit but it was a very I I don't know we're not huge on kale because it seems so challenging <laughs> but it was very delicious it was really delicious well i'm presuming i'm going to fix some sort of lamb dish for easter it seems to be where we we uh, lean each year and i will just let you know that i have a very simple lamb roast in my cookbook where once you've taken your lamb uh, roast and and rubbed it with sea salt, maybe poked some holes where you could stick little slivers of garlic in. Um, I then crush herbs, like I'll chop up rosemary and bay leaf and just rub it all over the lamb roast. And then I'll crank my oven up to 500 degrees and put it in a roasting dish. Once the oven is fully at the 500 degrees, I slip it into the oven I leave it for 15 minutes on that 500 degrees and then the oven is turned off without opening for an hour and a half or if it's a little bit larger than a two pound roast you can you could leave it for two hours when you take it out it's always perfectly done and I just slice it in slivers uh, in my cookbook I list it as a as lamb sliders but it's really it's really hard not to, you know, just start poking it in your mouth when you're cutting it. It's the simplest recipe ever. Um, you know, the main thing is you have to have patience and control so you do not open that oven or you'll ruin it. Yeah. Yet another spring food. Yes. So thank you all for coming today and adding your your enthusiasm well thank you Catherine we well, I have learned a lot and um, I'm looking forward to trying some of the suggestions and I'll work better on cooking my frittata so I really appreciate you coming and thank you for your cookbook and gratitude really makes a difference so it, thank you it does make a difference it is available at Island uh, at Eagle Harbor books and I think um, a willow tree but enjoy yeah. And have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. And the same to you. Thank you, everybody.